Grids are insanely helpful in logo designing, but they're often misunderstood. We will for sure get to the circular magic and the beautiful lines, but firstly, just remember this one crucial thing. Logo design grids, for the most part, are used in the later stages of a logo design project. You first need to go through the design process of research, developing concepts, and all that good stuff. The logo grid itself is used to neaten up and perfect the logo in the latter stages. Now that's out of the way and said and done, let's get to the juicy stuff. The first thing you should know about logo grids is that, as a general rule, circular and oval grids are awesome for making organic and natural kinds of logos. You know, like this chilled polar bear logo design right here. Or this kangaroo. If this kangaroo is an actual brandable logo, it's another matter. But as a general rule, if you want something natural, then a lot of circular grids will help that fact. On the flip side, you then have the more man-made and rigid designs. These logos heavily use straight lines for the grids. And I find on my logo designs, depending on the shape psychology of course, 45 degree lines do work really well for neat designs like this. More about that later. So this first point is just a general rule and it's not a set in stone kind of thing. But let's look at the next aspect of logo design grids that I think you agree does make a lot of sense. Now, a lot of reasoning behind the use of grids is to keep your logo designs precise. Let's take a look at this Vespula design a little bit closer. The micro white space within the symbol is the same width throughout the entire design, and that's because I used a grid. However, we can call this space 1x or just 1 times. If I ever want to increase a part of the design that has a width of 2x or 2 times, I can use a grid to 100% precisely do that. It's one obvious but truly powerful reason for using a grid on your logos. Using grids with a set spacing that is precise and shown on a grid is also a great way to send clients a logo version so they can see how well mapped out it is, but it also helps any future designers who will end up working on this design. And speaking of width, let's take the Coco Chanel logo to demonstrate the next tip for using grids on your logos. Because here at Satoy Graphics, we look at the how to do something, but also the why. Anyway, when using grids on your logos, you can use circles to measure or show a width of the part of a design, but then show how that width is maintained in different areas of the design. This keeps things precise and clean, and it's one of those techniques that shows professionalism. Here's a mock logo to show you the next use for logo design grids, and this one again demonstrates a precise nature. You want to aim for precision when you're finishing your logos. So let's add some lines to represent a grid, and we will look at actual grids later in the video guys. But let's take our design and we can measure the angle degrees from the logo to the logo grid line, and that's 72 degrees. However, being precise and using grids to design things, we can show and be assured that our design shares the same angle in many other locations too. But the last tip before we look at an actual logo design grid is about micro white space. So here's another mock design, but let's slap that onto a grid. Now I can be really precise with the distance between the logo symbol and the logo type. I could also go in and kern the lettering to fit the grid, but in this instance my grid is just a bit too wide. Grids really help in being precise with micro white space around the logo symbol, the logo type, and between each other. But hey, what do you say, let's look at the fixed grid in Illustrator and how to actually properly use it. So in Adobe Illustrator, we want to come up to view and then show grid. But importantly, also check the snap to grid option. This is going to prove to be essential when you're designing your logos. And you can see that here because anything I create will fix itself to the grid lines. This helps to make sure everything you make is neat and flush on your vector logos. So, I'm going to start off with a circle using the ellipse tool, and I'm going to hold down both the Alt Option key and Shift. Again, for an actual logo project, you should know what the design is going to look like before you bring it to the grid. And you want to go through the design process and all that good stuff. Now I'm going to copy this and then paste it in place with Command or Control F. Notice how nicely my circles are touching the grid and snapping to it. Now I'm going to use the pen tool next and you don't even need to hold down shift when you're drawing things out simply because the snap to grid option is activated. 
it makes drawing so much easier, guys. Now, can you envision what sort of quick mock logo I'm going to make from this here? But next, I'm going to use that technique by using a circle to measure a width of my design, but I want this circle to be a standalone circle at the same width as my other part of the logo. So after finishing up with one more line, it's time to grab the Shape Builder tool, which you can find right here. With your design highlighted, just click around it like so, and if you want to remove things, just use the Alt Option key. And hey, that's a very quick mock logo symbol just made using a grid. And like I said, to keep unity on a logo design, or even a typeface for that matter, you can take parts of your design, copy it over, and you will keep the angles the same degrees as we looked at earlier. So here are some reasons for using a grid on your logos and how to go about it when you embark on a design. And if you really want to get to grips with the logo design process, be sure to check out my e-guide linked in the description box below. And until next time guys, design your futures today. Peace.